And the Bible says in, in Acts chapter 2, oh, let me tell you the sermon title real quick. The sermon title, because I was thinking about high school football and, you know, cheerleading and all the cheers. It's Go Fight Win. All right, I was gonna, I was gonna be S score score, C score score, S E O R, but that didn't work out that well, and it's just too many letters and words, and I can't spell because I was in a slow reading class. Let's go. All right, here we go. Forty two, verse forty two. They were continually devoting themselves to the apostles' teaching, to fellowship, and to the breaking of bread and a prayer. And everyone kept feeling a sense of awe, and many wonders and signs were taking place to the apostles, and all those who believed were together. And they had all things in common, and they began selling their property and possessions and were sharing them with all as anyone might have a need. And day by day, continuing with one mind in the temple and breaking bread from house to house, they were taking their meals together with gladness and sincerity of heart, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord was adding to their number day by day those that were being saved. Raise your hand if you've heard me preach out of Acts chapter 2 uh, before. Here, here's the thing. Everybody should be raising their hand because I've already done it this year. There's something about this passage of scripture that reminds me of the basic principles of the church, of the family of God that we should not lose sight of. A couple things that I think, three ways uh, that we can, the church can work as a team and we can walk in victory. Number one, we need to be passionate about the team. We need to be passionate about the team. Here's the thing, you know, I watched a lot of games yesterday. Um, and, and some, you know, last week, it's, there's something about, you know, the team running out of the tunnel and, and, and you know, 100,000 you know, 100, people or 80,000 people all rooting for the same team. Uh, the chants, the cheers, the, 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 you know, the parades, all that leads in with the band. It gets you excited. Why? There is a sense of passion that I think sometimes the world has that the church needs to have. Are you with me? I mean, here's the deal. Right now, that... Listen, I'm, I'm going to get sidetracked here, but that's all right. Right now, in America today, there are churches that are meeting. People of God gathering together. And, and there's going to be a sermon, and there's going to be some songs, and many of those places are dry as dust. Matter of fact, there are many of them are sleep centers. Not here. Let me tell you, you sleep in here, you got problems. Matter of fact, if I find you sleeping in here, I might drop an elbow on you. Amen? <laughs> you wonder why I do all these crazy antics up on this stage is to keep some of you awake. Don't make me get sideways with you. <laughs> the Bible says this about being passionate about the team. They were, they, they, I love it. They were continually devoting themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship and the breaking of bread and to prayer. And then it says everyone, everyone. So they and everyone, those are team words. That's not a singular focus. They're not talking about the preacher alone. They're not talking about one group of people. They're saying as a group, we together, they are working in a manner that they're working to this for the same cause. And, and I, I've said this for years. The church, Christians, ought to be the most excited people in the world. Amen? I mean, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I mean, I'm just telling you right now, we ought to be the most excited people in the world. Think about it. Jesus paid our sin debt. Somebody say, woo woo. All right. He washed away our sins. All right. Some guys say, woo woo. All right. I'm hearing all ladies. All right. Woo woo. I don't know how that sounds. All right. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. Ooh. The Bible says when we are weak, he is strong. That's a positive thing. That's something we should be excited about. It's a promise of God. He's never going to leave us. He's never going to forsake us. And matter of fact, here's something else we should be excited about. When we die, we live. I mean, think about that. We ought to be the most excited people in the world. Why? We got the joy, 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 joy down in our heart. Yeah. What would you say? Where? Down in his heart. We'll bring it out, all right? Bring it on out. Hey, that, that's the thing. I think we miss the importance of some level of passion for, for God's team, the body of Christ. You want to know why? It's his church. And can I tell you this real quick about God's church? It's the bride of Christ. And you and I should be excited about being a part of the work of the Lord. And when we learn to be passionate about the team, things change things change. The Bible says that they worshiped together. They worshiped together. They were continually devoting themselves to the apostles' teaching, to fellowship, to the breaking of bread, 
to prayer? Do you realize that today when you came on this campus, if you're a believer in the Lord and you're coming to the church of God, the body of Christ, you have a responsibility. Said it before, say it again. Many people in our society today, church is nothing more than what can I get from the church as opposed to what can I give. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 23 through 25, the Bible says we should not forsake our assembling together, but rather when we gather together, we should stimulate one another to love and good deeds, and we should encourage one another all the same, the Bible says. I mean, I don't know about you, I want my passion for Jesus, um, I want it to be contagious. I, 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 want, I, want, I want my Jesus cooties to get all over you. Matter of fact, a lady walked out in the last service, and she's like, is Jesus cooties, is that copyrighted? And I'm, I'm like, I don't think so. And she says, I'm making a shirt. <laughs> and I was like, I need 10% royalties, all right, <laughs> to the building fund of First Baptist Church of Yumatilla. I, 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 you know, when you, went to school, when you were in school back in the day and somebody got chicken pox, you could see it, couldn't you? You could see the chicken pox, and, and they could feel it, couldn't they? And how do you know they could feel the chicken pox? And I know what you were thinking, like, why did their mama let them come to school? And then all of a sudden, that kid that had chicken pox uh, passed it to everybody else. Why? It was contagious. And what they had that you saw and they felt, you then saw and you felt. And for you and I as the body of Christ, as God's team, we ought to be contagious and excited about doing the work of the Lord, passionate about uh, the plan that he has for us. They worshiped together. Like I said, too many people, when they walk in, it's only a matter of what they can, what they can get as opposed to what they can give. I, I want to encourage people with my words. You know, I want the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart to be pleasing unto the Lord and hopefully provide some encouragement uh, to other people. You know, can I tell you this? Show people in, in our society today, you know something that's big? Just show people that you care. Seriously. Just show people that you care. I think sometimes we lose sight of the value of just having a caring heart. We had a guy at our church years ago um, at Mount Dora. He'd walk around with a little scratch sheet of paper. If he saw you and you were a first-time visitor, he'd walk over and he'd introduce himself to you. And he knew everybody in the church, so he could tell who was first-time visitor and who was, who was you know, somebody who'd been there forever. And he'd, he'd go over and introduce himself. What's your name? And, he, and he'd take a little notepad and he'd write your name down. And all week long, he would hold that notepad uh, and he would pray over the name of that person. And then the following Sunday, he'd try to see, did they come back? And if they came back, he'd walk over to them and he'd say, hey, Jane, good to see you. And they'd be like, creepy. <laughs> he knows my name. And what they found out was, you know what, he cared. He cared enough about their life that all week, not only was he praying for them, but he was hopeful that he was going to capitalize on a moment down the road where he could let them know you're not just a number here. You're not, just a, you're not just a piece of the puzzle. You have a name. You are on God's team. You are welcome and invited to be a part of what God is doing. Listen to me, church. You and I got to get it. That, that while we're here, it's, it's, like the, it's like the pep rally for God's people before we go out there onto the field. And here's what I want you to know about God's team. Many people will, all, will always choose to stay on the sideline. But I'm going to tell you, I don't want to be in the stands just as a cheerleader. I, I want to be on the field. I want to crack some heads in the name of Jesus. I probably wouldn't do a very good job of the physical part of cracking somebody's head. But I want to be out there, and, and, I, and I want to be active. I want to be serving. You know, I was preaching uh, when I was in Alabama. I, pre <coughs> I was preaching <coughs> for about six months because we didn't have a pastor. I was the youth guy, and you know, I wasn't the youth pastor. I was the youth guy. I think my title was youth pastor, but most people just call you the youth guy. A lot of respect there. And uh, I'll never forget, there was a few Sundays I got done preaching, and this lady, she, she's, you know, greeting me at the door when I leave because we're shaking hands. And she said, you went over. <laughs> and, you know, it's crazy. Like, there was a lot of things that I was thinking at that time. But, you know what, the Holy Spirit of God wouldn't let me say it. And... Uh, you know, I was thinking, you know, when you get home and you choke on a chicken bone, it ain't my fault, okay? 
But here, here was my real thought. Here was my real thought, and I'm about to start preaching, okay? Over what? Over what? You know what the problem with most churches today is? They've got their schedule. They got their order of service, stand up, sit down, fight, fight, fight. And then everybody come in and everybody go out, do the same thing all the time. Don't give God five minutes for the Holy Spirit to do some work. That's the problem. Because we're so focused on us. Listen, we need to be passionate about the team. And the team is God's team. So when we're passionate about God's team, we're passionate about God. And I'm going to tell you, it makes a difference. It makes a difference. When you're passionate about God's team, let me tell you, when somebody's down, the team needs to go and pick them up. It's weird. I get it. I didn't think that I was going to do this. But when, when I first started in ministry, I didn't realize I was going to like doing funerals as much as I do. I, it's not that I like the, 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 the portion of it that involves death. I like that God has gifted me in a manner that I can put the fun in funeral. So in some unique way, the Lord, you know, penetrates my crazy brain, and, and, he, and he says, Brooks, you know, here, here's what I want you to do. And, and what happens is when I meet with families quite often to talk about a service, I'll say this, I can't change the outcome of the loss of your loved one. But one thing that I can do, I can, I can do my best to make uh, this service something that when you leave and you get out in your car, you're going to say this, man, that was really good. And you know what's crazy? And I, this happened last week. I had two ladies, they're like, you know what, I don't know if I can say this, that was the best funeral I've ever been to in my life. <laughs> and she says, I want you to do my funeral. And I'm like, are you sick? I'm not telling you that to boast in me. I'm telling you that because as the family of God, when you are passionate about what you do, let me tell you, people will take notice. People will take notice. And when the church becomes passionate about the team, you know the Bible says that, that Jesus spoke to the disciples and the church in John chapter 13, and he said, listen, a new commandment that I give you, that you love one another just as I have loved you. And then he says this, by this, by this, if, if you love you, the church, if the church loves the church, by this, all men will know that you are my disciples. Let, real quick, just by, prove my point, okay? Prove my point. How many of you, by a show of hands, have ever been involved, I'm not saying you started it, but you were aware of it, you might have been at the church, how many of you have ever been involved in a church split? Real quick, raise them up, raise them up, hold them up, hold them up. How sad is that? How sad is that? When the people of God, God's team, can't even love one another. And you know what the outside world does when we do that? They laugh. They laugh. By this, all men will know that you are my disciples. We need to be passionate about the team. Secondly, y'all hurry up. I got sidetracked there in point number one. You gotta, we need to be united. We need to be united in the cause. United in the cause. This is what it says in verse 43. Everyone, not just some people, everyone kept feeling a sense of awe. And many wonders and signs were taking place through the apostles. And all those who believed were together. And they had all things in common. You know what that means, don't you? The Gator fans and the Seminole fans were friends. Maybe not. Maybe that's a different translation. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. It says they had all things in common in regards to the body of Christ. In regards to the body of Christ. The sad truth is that most churches today uh, deal with division. And I'm going to give you just real quick three, three reasons why division come in the church. Three reasons why division come. Why would I tell you about division when I'm talking to you about unity? The w way to be unified is to point out uh, areas that divisions can come. Three things. People, listen to me now. People cause division. Are you with me? People, uh, pride. Pride causes division and preference. People, first off. People will drive you crazy. I mean, I love some of you, but I mean, I'm kidding. <laughs> that came out wrong. I didn't grow up in a household, my parents didn't drink alcohol, uh, nobody smoked cigarettes, you know, um, they didn't really even use foul language at all, and my dad <laughs> used to make this statement, my dad, my dad was a nice guy, he wasn't really as outgoing as me, but my dad used to say, man, they drive me to drink. You ever heard that? 
That person, you are on my, you are getting on my last people. I mean, seriously. Sometimes people just drive you crazy. And you want to know why? Well, I'm going to tell you why. Everybody has an opinion. Go to Umatilla word of mouth. I mean, I'm not even on social media, but I know through other people that in Umatilla word of mouth and Eustace word of mouth and Tavares word of mouth. It's Tavares. Everybody's got an opinion. And here's the difference between 2023 and 1980. Everybody in 2023 thinks the world needs to hear their opinion. Nobody cares. <laughs> Can I tell you about uh, your opinion and my opinion as it pertains to the Lord? Shh. Shh. This is God's house. This is his team. Don't tell the coach how to run his team. Don't, don't tell the coach how to take care of his house. I think we've lost sight. Why? Because we all we have these opinions. And Pete, listen to this. In 2022, I mean, that's last year, Barna Research did a study after speaking to literally uh, thousands of pastors across America. And they said over 42% of pastors are thinking about leaving the ministry. Not leaving the church. Not saying these people are nuts. I'm going somewhere else. Not saying there's a better job out there. Literally leaving the ministry. You want to know why the number, the number one cause of pastors wanting to leave the ministry? People. And I know what you're thinking, but pastor, aren't you supposed to be here for people? We are. And when we are weak, he is strong, and we need to overcome. But I'll tell you, sometimes, sometimes, I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about other people. <laughs> Secondly, pride. Pride. Can I tell you something about pride? I'll give you a little Bible verse. Pride comes before the fall. Listen, America, listen up. We are crumbling because of our pride. We are in debt up to our ears, yet we say we're the richest nation in the world because of our pride. We have allowed the deception of the enemy and our own selfish ambition to take us into a hole that we can't climb out of because of our pride. And let me tell you this, the same can happen in the church. And let me be, let me be very clear. And let me be, be very clear to the guy that's on stage. This ain't your church, Pastor Brooks. Oh, you're, you're the pastor? You've been doing, oh, your church. No, 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 no. <laughs> I was sitting next to a kid last Sunday in the event center. He goes, do you own this place? <laughs> I was like, yeah. <laughs> Paid it off last week. <laughs> Do you own this place? Let me tell you, um, we all together as God's team are a part of God's plan and his mission, but this is his place. This is his place. And don't, don't can I tell you something? Today's just one of those days I keep getting sidetracked. The church is the bride of Christ. And let me tell you this about the Lord. Don't go in front of him. You know why when we say the Pledge of Allegiance, we say one nation under God, because he needs to be in charge. Not me, not you, not my opinion, not your opinion, his standard, his plan that he's already laid out for all of us, and we need to be united in that. So people preference, and um, excuse me, people pride, and then preference. When's the last time you've been in the convenience store and you didn't know what you wanted to get to drink, but you just went in there and looked at the cooler section? There's about a thousand different options. And you think, well, I'm thinking to get a Gatorade today. Okay, well, you better look for 17 minutes because there's 17 different Gatorades. And when's the last time you went to Bucky's and we were going to get a soda? <laughs> okay, so here's the deal the fountain section of Bucky's. You know, back in the day when people say, I'm, I'm going to get me a suicide, psh, 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 you would die on the spot at Bucky's if you did that. <laughs> There are literally 70 different fountain drinks. And here's the problem with our world, and this is what I want you to see. It's rolled over into the church. Everybody has their preference. And people say, well, what kind of church are you? Tell me your worship style. Are you modern? Are you contemporary? Are you traditional? Is it hymn books and choir robes? Is the, is the, are the words on the screen? 
Now, let me ask you, are you guys a dressy church, or are you guys uh, uh, maybe more casual? Because I don't like dressy. I'm more casual. I don't like casual. I think you got to dress up. Now, do you guys serve coffee at your church? Are you allowed to drink um, and eat snacks in the sanctuary at your church? And here's the deal. All those things matter, I guess, but we are losing sight of why we're here. Well, pastor, I'm just going to tell you right now, I didn't like it today because I didn't like the songs. Or I didn't like it today because they ran out of bananas over in the, well, that's because I already got two, okay? Boom. And, and all of a sudden, I mean, let me tell you, if we don't have peppermints out there, some of you won't be able to, you won't be able to make it. Preference, everybody's got a preference. And, and what's wrong, what's happened is, once again, we're focused on what we're getting versus what we're giving back to God. The unity of the early church was a clear sign of the Holy Spirit of God being present in their lives. As the Bible said, they, they kept feeling this sense of awe and many wonders and signs were taking place. And all those who believed were together. They had all things in common. They began selling their property and possessions as anyone might have need. And let me tell you, when the church, man, when the church is unified for the cause, God can do some great things. If everyone in the church would just tithe a minimum, and I'm not even talking about, I'm not even talking about, uh, I'm talking about the church as a whole, okay? Listen to me. The word tithe is a word from, uh, it's in, in the Old Testament and referred to even in the New Testament in regards to how we give a tenth of our, of our earnings, we give unto the Lord, all right, through the avenue of the church. And I just want you to realize this. This is no joke. I mean, I'm not making this up. So we, we're in a $14.5 million project. we got about $5 million left to go. No joke, no joke, no joke. If everybody here at First Baptist Umatilla, if you're here today and you're not a member, I'm not talking about you. If you're here today and you're not saved, I'm, I'm, I'm actually not talking about you. I'm talking to the church members here that have made a commitment, that are saved, that know God's called them here to First Baptist Umatilla. If all of us just tithed, listen to me, no kid would ever pay to go to kids camp. No, our, our student ministry would never do a fundraiser. The $5 million that we need to finish the, the sanctuary project wouldn't even be there. Paying $775,000 to buy 25 lakefront acres wouldn't even have been a question. When people give in the manner that, that God has called them to give, we are unified in the cause. Florida Baptist Disaster Relief, they'd have buckets of money to go out and help people right now. I'm going to tell you this, and I said this earlier, I'm going to continue to use this term about God's team, the church. The church, I'm going to tell the church is the bride of Christ. He is the bridegroom. The church is the bride of Christ. Listen to me. Don't steal from the bride. Because you're not stealing from me. You're not stealing from you. You're not stealing from the lights and the power. Don't steal from the bride of Christ. Because I'm going to tell you, this entity, the church, is the saving grace that America still has. That through Jesus Christ and his power through the local church, as we continue to pray and we continue to serve and we continue to give, we can do amazing things. And I'm going to tell you another thing. If every one of us just found a spot to serve, and here's what I love about football. You know what? You think the wa being a, a water boy is not a big deal? Well, wait till you're out there on the field and it's 120 degrees out there and you're dying of thirst. You can't wait for that hydration specialist. <laughs> just boosting their resume, you know. That, that person has a role. And the guy that holds the, holds the, the flag um, for, you know, the yard marker, that, that they move the chains, you think that person's important? Absolutely, got to have it. And the person that puts the headsets on the coaches and the guy that picks up the headsets when the coaches throw them on the ground, that guy's important. <laughs> guy's important. Mainly talking about Steve Spurrier, y'all remember? Okay, there we go. Everybody's got a role. 
Yesterday, I got a phone call from a gentleman. His mom passed away. He said, Mom, uh, mom made it into heaven for years at this church. We had a ministry called Bags. We, we still have it called Bags for Babies. Every baby that's born at Advent Health Waterman, the day that that child is born, the nurses there are aware of the ministry. We provide them these bags, pink for girls, blue for boys. We're keeping it that way, just so you know. And so what happens is you have a boy, and you have a boy, um, they, they, bring you a little, they bring you a little bag from our church. And it's got a Bible, and it's got an embroidered uh, burp cloth, and it's got some baby wipes and baby lotion and, uh, you know, a bunch, of, a bunch of little things that are in there, no, a note from our church. And it's a cool ministry. Well, there was a lady every Sunday morning and throughout the week, she sat right back there by that glass window, and during the sermon, she would crochet handmade booties. Hundreds of these things. She loved this ministry, and she'd come in with Ziploc bags full of these things, and she did it for years. And let me tell you something about Beverly Hale. She never served on a committee here at this church. She never stood at the door and, and shook hands. She didn't have a title. She didn't run a camera. She didn't serve in the praise team. But she knew, I'm a part of God's team. And I want to be unified with this mission, and that's to reach people for Jesus. And I can only imagine when she stepped into eternity that the Lord looked at her and said, because of what you've done to the least of these, you've done it unto me. Welcome in, my good and faithful servant. Not because she was great at making crocheted booties. But can you, can you imagine how many little babies in, in our county, because of that lady's faithfulness, might have a little keepsake for their child because she was faithful in serving the Lord? You know, we got to be unified in how we serve the Lord because everybody's got a part. My wife and I have, we have ten children, three that are in heaven, um, seven that are here on this earth. Uh, my wife's given birth, uh, you know, Seven, she gave birth seven times, and in that process, uh, you, you see some of the people that she has birthed uh, walking around church today. Uh, but she was able to have a regular delivery for all of them, except for the last, which was the smallest. I mean, we got a two-pound, ten-and-a-half-ounce kid, and we can't have delivery. we got to have a C-section. She's like... I mean, she made it all that time, and then she's got to have a C-section. Here's what I want you to know about a surgical team. They are efficient, they are unified, and everybody knows their role. And I'm going to tell you, when somebody starts cutting you open, you want them to be efficient, you want them to be unified, and you want them, you want them to have precision in, in just about everything that they do. And it's nuts from the OR lead that comes in and they tell you step by step, this is what's going to happen. And, and Mrs. Braswell, we're going to take you back. And your husband's going to be able to come. Don't worry, but we're going to take you back first. And then the anesthesiologist and the anesthesiologist tech that are there. And they say, Mrs. Braswell, we're about to give you some night-night medicine. And you're not going to feel anything from this portion of your body down. And you're going to have a tingling sensation. And then they put this big curtain up in front of you. And then the husband comes in, which is me. And you peek around the curtain and you realize, I shouldn't have done that. <laughs> because on the other side, they have heavy equipment. And lots of tools. And, and they, they pretty much, you know, they pretty much cut a big hole in your tummy to pull out this human being. And the baby comes out, and the baby's crying, and everything seems good. And you're thinking, let's wrap this party up and go home. Oh, no, they've still got some work to do over there. they got, they got to close that hole up. And then I realize, I start hearing this uh, recitation of all of these uh, different statements. And they're calling out numerous times all of the instruments that they used to do the surgery. And I'm thinking, why are they doing that? They have to get a record of everything that they use because they got to make sure they didn't leave anything in there. And I'm like, Doc, where's your cell phone? I've seen that commercial. We are not going home with your iPhone 14, okay? But here's one of the things that I appreciated about it. 
they were unified in the cause. And when they were unified, great things happened. Same goes with God's team, his church. Lastly, one more thing. Be committed to the coach. Be committed to the coach. And I want you to know something real quick. Look at me. I'm not the coach. I work for the coach. Be committed to Jesus. The Bible says this. Verse 46, and day by day, continuing with one mind in the temple, breaking bread from house to house, they were taking their meals together with gladness and sincerity of heart and praising who? God, the Bible says. They were praising God and they were having favor with all the people and the Lord and the Lord and the Lord was adding to their number day by day those that were being Say, let me tell you this, you can say what you want about Deion Sanders and Coach Prime, whatever you want to call him, but dude got those boys ready to play yesterday. And if you didn't watch Colorado and TCU, and you know, can I tell you what they said at the end of the game? They interviewed him, and you know, he was saying God is good, and uh, his son was there, and the other kid that's obviously going to play in the NFL, he was there. And they said, tell, tell us about, you know, how did you guys do this? And this is what they said, both the boys. We believe in one another. Perfect opportunity to say, you know how good I am? That's how we won this game. We believe in one another. We listen to our coach. We follow the game plan. We trust this process. The early church was praising God constantly. They were devoted to the word of God. They were faithful to God's plan. It is amazing the influence that a coach can have on somebody. Many of you that played sports throughout your life remember the influence that a coach had. Well, God, you know, through Christ is our coach, and we need to submit to him. My personal desire in life, and I know a lot of people don't think that sometimes I say stuff like seriously. My personal desire as to how I navigate through life is this. It comes from a Bible verse. Seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. And listen to me now. All these things shall be added unto you. Seek first. So what are you trying to say? All, all I'm supposed to do in life is just keep my focus on Jesus, and then, and then all of a sudden he's going to tell me one day who I'm supposed to marry? Matter of fact, <laughs> some of you might want to hit the rewind button, okay? Whoa, whoa, whoa. So I, how, I mean, I'm trying to find my career. I'm going to college. I mean, I, I'm trying to get an education. I want to know what to do. Seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. 2007, got the privilege of being the pastor at First Baptist Church of Umatilla. 200 people out here. Man, I was so pumped up. Man, I'm telling you, you think I cry a bunch now? I used to cry like a baby every Sunday, it seemed like. People kept coming forward, giving their lives to the Lord. It was just, it was unreal seeing what God was doing on a regular basis. And all I knew, all I knew to do, I'm just, I'm just being real with you. Brooks, seek first his kingdom. Brooks, seek first his righteousness and all these things. What are all these things? Property, a sanctuary, new ministries, new staff, a new office, buying a vehicle, selling a vehicle, all these things, mission strips, whatever it is, all these things shall be added unto you. I was thinking of writing a book a number of years ago. People were like, man, with all this growth, you ought to write a book about how to grow a mega church and a mini town. And you know, I got to thinking about writing that book, and I got to thinking, you know what? He already wrote it. Who? He already wrote it. It's right there. It says when the church focused on him, the Lord added to their number, day by day, those that were being saved. Amen?